Mutual Fund Separation Theorem In Portfolio Theory, a Mutual Fund Separation Theorem, Mutual Fund Theorem, or Separation Theorem is a theorem stating that, under certain conditions, any investor's optimal portfolio can be constructed by holding each of certain mutual funds in appropriate ratios, where the number of mutual funds is smaller than the number of individual assets in the portfolio. Here a mutual fund refers to any specified benchmark portfolio of the available assets. There are two advantages of having a mutual fund theorem. First, if the relevant conditions are met, it may be easier, or lower in transactions costs, for an investor to purchase a smaller number of mutual funds than to purchase a larger number of assets individually. Second, from a theoretical and empirical standpoint, if it can be assumed that the relevant conditions are indeed satisfied, then implications for the functioning of asset markets can be derived and tested. Portfolio Separation in Mean Variance Analysis Portfolios can be analyzed in a mean variance framework, with every investor holding the portfolio with the lowest possible return variance consistent with that investor's chosen level of expected return, called a minimum variance portfolio. If the returns on the assets are jointly elliptically distributed, including the special case in which they are jointly normally distributed. Under mean variance analysis, it can be shown that every minimum variance portfolio given a particular expected return, that is, every efficient portfolio, can be formed as a combination of any two efficient portfolios. If the investor's optimal portfolio has an expected return that is between the expected returns on two efficient benchmark portfolios, then that investor's portfolio can be characterized as consisting of positive quantities of the two benchmark portfolios. No risk-free asset. To see two fund separation in a context in which no risk-free asset is available, using matrix algebra, let sigma 2, backslash displace tile backslash sigma 2, be the variance of the portfolio return, let mu, backslash displace tile backslash mu, be the level of expected return on the portfolio that portfolio return variance is to be minimized contingent upon, let r, backslash displace tile r, be the vector of expected returns on the available assets, let x, backslash displaced tile x, be the vector of amounts to be placed in the available assets, let w, backslash displaced tile w, be the amount of wealth that is to be allocated in the portfolio, and let 1, backslash displaced tile 1, be a vector of 1s. Then the problem of minimizing the portfolio return variance subject to a given level of expected portfolio return can be stated as whether superscript t, backslash displaced tile t, denotes the transpose of a matrix. The portfolio return variance in the objective function can be written as sigma 2 equals xtv x backslash displaced tile backslash sigma 2 equals x to the power of tv x where v backslash displaced tile v is the positive definite covariance matrix of the individual assets returns. The Lagrangian for this constrained optimization problem, whose second order conditions can be shown to be satisfied, is with Lagrange multipliers lambda, backslash displace tile backslash lambda, and eta, backslash displace tile backslash eta. This can be solved for the optimal vector x, backslash displace tile x, of asset quantities by equating to zero the derivatives with respect to x, backslash displace tile x, lambda, backslash displace tile backslash lambda, and eta, backslash displace tile backslash eta, provisionally solving the first order condition for x, backslash displace tile x, in terms of lambda, backslash displace tile backslash lambda, and eta, backslash displace tile backslash eta, substituting into the other first order conditions, solving for lambda, backslash displace tile backslash lambda, and eta, backslash displace tile backslash eta, in terms of the model parameters, and substituting back into the provisional solution for x, backslash displace tile x. Dot the result is where. For simplicity this can be written more compactly as where alpha, backslash displace tile backslash alpha, and beta, backslash displace tile backslash beta, are parameter vectors based on the underlying model parameters. 
Now consider two benchmark efficient portfolios constructed at benchmark expected returns mu1, backslash display style backslash mu1, and mu2, backslash display style backslash mu2, and thus given by. And the optimal portfolio at arbitrary mu3, backslash display style backslash mu3, can then be written as a weighted average of x1 opt, backslash display style x sub 1 carat backslash math opt, and x2 opt, backslash display style x sub 2 carat backslash math opt, as follows. This equation proves the two fund separation theorem for mean variance analysis. For a geometric interpretation, see the mark of its bullet. 1. Risk-free asset. If a risk-free asset is available, then again a two-fund separation theorem applies, but in this case one of the funds can be chosen to be a very simple fund containing only the risk-free asset, and the other fund can be chosen to be one which contains zero holdings of the risk-free asset. Dot with the risk-free asset referred to as money, this form of the theorem is referred to as the monetary separation theorem, thus mean variance efficient portfolios can be formed simply as a combination of holdings of the risk-free asset and holdings of a particular efficient fund that contains only risky assets. The derivation above does not apply, however, since with a risk-free asset the above covariance matrix of all asset returns, V, backslash display style V, would have one row and one column of zeros and thus would not be invertible. Instead, the problem can be set up as where RF, backslash display style R sub F, is the known return on the risk-free asset, X, backslash display style X, is now the vector of quantities to be held in the risky assets, and R, backslash display style R, is the vector of expected returns on the risky assets. The left side of the last equation is the expected return on the portfolio, since, W minus X T1, backslash display style, Wx to the power of T1, is the quantity held in the risk-free asset, thus incorporating the asset adding up constraint that in the earlier problem required the inclusion of a separate Lagrangian constraint. Dot the objective function can be written as sigma 2 equals xtvx, backslash display style backslash sigma 2 equals x to the power of tvx where now V, backslash display style V, is the covariance matrix of the risky assets only. This optimization problem can be shown to yield the optimal vector of risky asset holdings. Of course this equals a zero vector if mu equals WRF, backslash display style backslash mu equals WR sub F, the risk-free portfolio's return, in which case all wealth is held in the risk-free asset. It can be shown that the portfolio with exactly zero holdings of the risk-free asset occurs at mu equals wrtv minus 1, r minus 1 rf, 1 tv minus 1, r minus 1 rf, backslash display style backslash mu equals backslash frac, wr to the power of tv to the power of minus 1 r1 r sub f1 to the power of tv to the power of minus 1 r1 r sub f, and is given by. It can also be shown, analogously to the demonstration in the above two mutual fund case, that every portfolio's risky asset vector, that is, XOPT, backslash display style X backslash math, opt, for every value of mu, backslash display style backslash mu, can be formed as a weighted combination of the latter vector and the zero vector. For a geometric interpretation, see the efficient frontier with no risk-free asset. Dot portfolio separation without mean variance analysis. If investors have hyperbolic absolute risk aversion, HARA, including the power utility function, logarithmic function and the exponential utility function, separation theorems can be obtained without the use of mean variance analysis. For example, David Cass and Joseph Stiglitz showed in 1970 that two-fund monetary separation applies if all investors have higher utility with the same exponent as each other. Colon ch.4. More recently, in the dynamic portfolio optimization model of Sarnar and Ozkisi, the investor's level of initial wealth, the distinguishing feature of investors, does not affect the optimal composition of the risky part of the portfolio. A similar result is given by Schmeders.